What on earth was Ferrari thinking when they built this engine? Come on, guys. We only needed one fastener in there, not two. Hello, everybody. Good day to you, and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. This is a 2002 Pontiac Firebird. It's got the 3.8 liter, 3800 series V6 engine. And we're rocking out some Ferrari hubcaps. So, because this thing is a Firebird and it has some Ferrari hubcaps on it, it has been affectionately named the Ferrari Bird. Starting the engine. Very nice. This particular Firebird has approximately 158,695 miles on the odometer. We've got an oil change light on, we've got a brake light on, we've got a security light on, that's a new one. Now, we've seen this vehicle before. It's a, it's a spare vehicle, like a Sunday driver, so to speak. And it happens to suffer from one of the main Achilles heel conditions of the 3800, 3400, and 3100 GM V6 engines of its era. And that failure is the seals at the lower intake manifold. They tend to leak coolant into the oil and they tend to leak oil on the exterior of the engine. And on occasion, if they get bad enough, they tend to leak coolant on the exterior as well. So there's a few leaks going on with this thing. Uh, I believe it also has a rear crankshaft seal leak. Um, we're going to start with the intake manifold first and if need be we'll get the uh, transmission pulled out of this unit and then we'll change out the uh, rear crankshaft seal as well but we're going to start with the reseal job in this particular uh, Pontiac from the top of the engine down and we're going to go from there so this is going to be a rather in-depth video we're going to pull the top of the engine apart seal everything up nice and shiny like and get this thing back to pristine operating show car quality condition. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. There she is, 3800 Series 2 GM V6. And look at here. She's kind of buried under the firewall a little bit. We've got a strut tower brace in the way for all body spacer. And we've got cylinder head bank here, cylinder head bank here, and this right here is our intake manifold. So what we need to do is get in there, dig this intake manifold out, then we can take the lower manifold out and then replace all the seals and gaskets at the lower intake manifold between the manifold and the block. If we zoom in a little closer, look down past these fuel lines, you can see all that oil saturation building up on this lower intake. You see all that down there? A whole bunch of it going on. Over here behind the alternator on the other side, we've got a bunch of leaves from an oak tree and they are also oil soaked pretty heavily. So one of the first things we need to do here is drain the engine coolant out of it. Now. There is a drain valve down here on the lower side of the radiator on the passenger side, but I can't even seem to get my, my drain pin under there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the rack arms up. We'll lift this up a few inches. That way we can squeeze down below and get all the coolant drained out of this engine. Now I realize I call this car the Ferrari Bird, and I do realize it is not a Ferrari, okay? But that does not mean that everybody gets to hate on this Ferrari bird just because it has Ferrari hubcaps. Those things hold some sentimental value. And that right there, the hate for things like that is exactly the problem with today's modern car community as a whole. You know, every time someone does something custom or unique or personalized, there's a bunch of people that run in behind them and, and hate all over it and crap on what they did because it's something that they wouldn't do. And that's not the point here. When you modify things and customize things, it's for you and not everyone else. So don't be a troll. Nobody likes a troll and nobody likes a hater. So stop it. Yeah, this right here, this is what I think about those trolls. Right here. There you go, guys. This one's for you. Hey, take a look at this. All kinds of uh, oily residue build up inside of the radiator. That means there is, in fact, engine oil 
entering the cooling system. That's not good. Okay, so we're not gonna get too far with uh, this brace bar in the way. So let's go ahead and pull this thing off. It's gonna be four 15 millimeter nuts. Break these guys loose. I should also mention that we've seen this uh, Ferrari bird here before for a massive AC repair. Uh, once upon a time, the uh, AC compressor exploded and sent shrapnel through the whole system. We had to put an AC system in it. Compressor, condenser, you name it, that's not gonna come off. The AC orifice tube was found to be completely clogged with metal chunks from the compressor. We made a couple videos on that project. I will uh, leave them, leave a link to them down in this video's description in case you guys wanna go back and take a look at the grenaded AC compressor. Cause it was a bad one. I've never seen one fail that badly before. It literally defined the term grenaded. Stabilizing bar is still not coming out. There we go, got it. So since our intake manifold is coming off, that means our intake plumbing is coming off, which means our intake tubing is coming off. So let's continue disassembly. How's our air filter? Beautiful. Here, let's lose some connectors here. I think I can actually get away with leaving this throttle body attached to the intake. I think. I don't see any real reason to remove it. Get rid of that guy. Very good. I see we found some 200 mile per hour tape here. That's duct tape. Not duck, like quack quack duck, but duct for like heating ducts. That's what it's supposed to be for. But we all call it duct tape for some reason. So much so that someone even made a brand of tape called duct tape. Not sponsored, but I've seen it. Duct tape. Let's see, there's one 10 mil nut right here. It's holding on to a piece of this harness. So while we're here in this corner, there's an EGR tube going into this intake. We need to disconnect that. Looks like a 13. Going the wrong way. Unflex that and pull that guy out. That's good. Fuel lines are staring at us in the face, so let's just go ahead and make this job nice and stinky right now. We'll get these fuel lines disconnected. How's this gonna work here? I need the tool. What we do is we take this little spreader tool here, and it's gonna fit inside of this fitting and it is going to spread the little fingers, there's little tabs inside of there that are locking onto the hard line on this side here. So we stick that little tool in, spread those little tabs out, they release, and then we can pull the line free. Yeah, see that little, uh, little tab? There they are inside of there. And we'll do the same thing on the small line. Push the line in. Wiggle the tool back, pull the line out. Easy peasy with the right tool. So we'll pull these off to the side and get them out of the way. And that leaves us a little bit of space here. I think I'm gonna pull the coil back out of here next. Or no, 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 you know what? Let's back it up. Let's pull the belt off and the alternator first. So we need a wrench on our tensioner here. Give that a tug. Untension the belt. Can pull it off the idler and pull it off of the alternator. Uh oh, I've gotten myself stuck. Look what I did. I got the wrench jammed against it and it's stuck on there. Oops, no matter. Let's just pry it off of there. Okay, on the back side of the nader, we've got one of our connectors and then we've got the primary power wire connector. 
that runs to the battery. What do we got there? A 10 mil? I believe so. Here, let's get that guy disconnected. Is that a 10? It doesn't feel like a 10. Maybe it's 11. Trying again. 11 millimeters. Let's see if that's the one. Oh, it got me twice. Eh, wrong. How about a 12? Let's try 12 millimeters on kickage. There we go. Okay, so we'll take this thing and just set it aside somewhere else. We'll put that over there. So this Nader appears to have three bolts. There's a 10, a 13, and then another 13 around the back side here. So let's crack all these guys loose. That one's loose. 13 on the back side. Crack you loose from your bracket. And then this one, ding, Nader's done. There we go. Smooth alternator. Just give it some wiggles, I guess. Not smooth alternator. Come here. There we go. Yeah, that's adjustable right there. When you tighten down that one bolt, it's going to move that little uh, bushing collar insert business there, and it's going to squeeze onto the bracket. Self-adjusting. Okay, so I need to mark where these ignition wires go. I'm just going to put uh, a little bit of paint. I've got some orange paint here. And these coils are actually labeled 1, 4, 5, and 2. And that would mean this is going to be 3 and 6 right here. So let's label that to three and six. Then we can label our wires at six. This one gets to be three. And this one is two. V for five. Now our paint's starting to flow. There we go. We're just gonna mark all those wires. This one's IV for four. I'm using Roman numerals. And then one. Okay, so now we know where all of these ignition wires go. So we can get these guys disconnected. That five looks like a seven, doesn't it? Oh, that's because it's a V. Yeah, V for five. That was four right there. Just toss these guys off to the side. So I do not have to take each individual coil off. The bracketry that those coils bolt onto is removable. Neutral drop. Perfect. See, it turns your non-impact ratchet into an impact. And that's a great way to break your ratchet too. Now this one, on click. Ooh. There we are. So I should be able to pull this up and out towards me enough to get a hold of the connector. There's a big old connector on the back side of this thing. You can see it back there? Might have to get it from this angle here. This is a bolt-on connector. I think it's a seven millimeter bolt. There we go. And our pack of coils goes out like so. And let's get back to the wiring harness now. We'll start removing the harness. And it looks like I need to pull the fuel injector connectors off at this time as well. They're kind of buried. There's one right there. It's going to be three on each side. It is a V6 engine. Okay. 
truth be told, this would have actually been an easier job in a front wheel drive vehicle. You see half the engine is under the wiper cowl here. Somewhat annoying. Okay, so harness is free. Tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll get the thermostat and thermostat housing disconnected. And I'll probably have to pull this EGR out of here and this EGR tube. Now, since those bolts are exposed to a lot of heat cycles, we'll throw some penetration lubricant on there. Nuts. We don't lube the bolts, we lube the nuts. There's no bolts here. Now, one thing I do have going for me on this EGR is that someone has replaced it before. So, Stands the reason I should be able to get to those fasteners with relative ease or get them off. That didn't come out right. You know what I'm talking about. Remove them. That's what that's what it is. Remove them. I'm removing the fasteners. Someone someone yelled at me in the comments the other day. They were like, What why do you why do you call them fasteners? And I'm just like, because they are fasteners. That's what they do. They fasten more lube. More torque. Step it up to the 3 8 wobble gun. If the quarter doesn't do it, the 3 8 always will. And if that doesn't work, half inch. 60% of the time, it works every time. Just keep uh, escalating the situation. Okay, so. We didn't get very far, but at least now the EGR is out of the way. Let's go ahead and pull off. I tell you what, I'm gonna remove this uh, this purge valve right here just because it's kind of in the way in this one bolt. And I just feel like I'm gonna break it if it's sitting here. Well, we're gonna pull that out. Yep, EVAP system purge valve. Now. We'll pull the thermostat and the housing off of the intake. That's a long bolt and a short bolt. I need not forget that. How's our thermostat looking? Uh, looks pretty grody from all the oil. That gasket's pretty gnarly. We're gonna need to put a thermostat in this. Look at that. That's not okay. All right, so there's a few things I'm noticing here that could be an issue, and one of which is gonna be this big bracket right here. I originally thought that perhaps I could just unbolt this manifold and sneak it out through there. Uh, that's not gonna be the case. I'm gonna have to pull this bracket off the front of the engine. So that means I need to pull off these, uh, these heater hoses, which are also kind of spongy and plasticky. Well, let's see how this is going to work out here. Yeah, that's a couple things we don't like here. 20 something years old, spongy and plasticky. This is how we break things. And I feel like I'm going to break these little tabs off of here. I'm going to try not to but they've got to come off because this bracket has got to come off. Yeah, I'm opening a can of worms now, guys. Look, there's O-rings in there that I'm going to have to replace. No, well, that's, that's just how it is, I suppose. Come off of there. Please don't break. Because if you break, I have to get new hoses. I probably have to get new hoses anyway. Because these are spongy. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's one. It's going to be double mini pry bar action pry driver. There. Yep, there's another flattened out O-ring right there. See it? So this whole bracket assembly appears to be a tensioner as well. Just a couple bolts hanging on to it here. 
is a 15. Is that one? And then the other one. I only see two so far. Another one. Yeah, it's just the two. Now, another thing I need to order and replace is this little coolant bypass business right here. There's an elbow. And those are made out of plastic and they tend to break. Let's see if I can't wiggle this guy out of here. It's also held in with some, some O-rings. It'd be a miracle if this comes out without breaking. Please come out. And it cracked. Yep. I broke it. Oh, that's why. Look, there's another another elbow over here. So I've got two elbows to contend with. That's fine. And that's the one that goes into the intake. So when I go to put this together, I've got to have this elbow and that elbow in this bracket and then push them forward into position there. So that's going to be two things to seal simultaneously. Let's just get this guy out of here right now. Wiggle it. Well, you're in there, aren't you? Why? Why is that so stuck? What's this problem? Was fun, yeah. Flattened out o ring. Now, that other one, yeah. I don't know. Have to save that one for later. Okay, well, while we're here, I may as well disconnect the fuel injectors. I've got to pull the fuel rail out of this thing, I think, in order to separate the upper intake from the lower intake there's a it's a two-piece kind of deal here that last injector is on pretty good there's a vacuum line right here pop that guy off okay we're getting somewhere i don't know exactly where that somewhere is leading us but we're getting there one way or the other tight squeeze back there i'm pulling off the little clips for the harness to detach the harness I realize wow I just dropped a flashlight and my my pocket driver at the same time anyway I realize you guys can't see because not even I can see I uh, offer my sincerest apologies on the matter bear with me we're gonna work past this okay harness is now free good and let's go ahead and get the nuts off that hold down the fuel rail. There's two on each side. Pull those guys out and then we can pop the fuel rail off of the manifold. There's that one. And then around here. see our other two. One of them's pretty far buried back there. But I can get it. Got the long reach. fuel rail is unbolted now we just need to work the injectors out of the holes in the manifold and extract this unit so what we're going to do we're going to come in here with a little pry driver trim tool here and i'm going to pry up slightly giving some pressure to these injectors and to the fuel rail we're going to pop these guys out of their bore holes sometimes they come out very easily 
and sometimes not. Um, uh oh, I'm gonna run into this thing right here. That's a, it looks like the manifold absolute pressure sensor. I need to pull that thing out as well. That's not gonna let the fuel rail come loose. I think we're looking at a Torx 30 bit. Let me squeeze this guy past the transmission dipstick tube here. Which can't really fit. There's not a lot of space in this engine bay. Ooh, don't drop it. Oh, righty then. There we go. Got it. Okay. Now go in there and dig out that uh, a little manifold business. Oh no, there's another bolt on the other side of it. No way. What on earth was Ferrari thinking when they built this engine? Come on guys. We only needed one fastener in there, not two. How am I supposed to get? Oh, there's a vacuum line attached to it too. So yeah, there's a vacuum line and another fastener back there. Hmm. You guys are making this hard on me. It wouldn't be so bad if this dipstick tube wasn't kind of in my way or this wiper cowl. Oh, we got her, no worries. That should be fun to put back in later. There she comes. Got it. All right. You lose, Ferrari. Okay, so that's hooked up some kind of vacuum hose or vacuum tube. And this vacuum line runs over to the fuel pressure regulator on the uh, fuel rail. We'll pull this thing off to the side. Come here. It's stuck. Ah. Okay. Back to where we were, pulling the fuel rails up and out. There we go. Looks like it came loose over on the other side as well. And it's barely gonna fit through here. So y'all have been saying the video has been kind of short this week and, and you're right, they have been, but we're about to change all that because this video is not going as easily as I had originally anticipated. That's okay. So, got our fuel rail. We're leaking. Set this guy down over here. We'll address that later. Now we're getting somewhere. The only vacuum line that's left is going to be the brake booster vacuum tube. So we'll go ahead and disconnect that from the booster. And now we can go in and pull all the bolts out that secure this upper intake down to that lower intake. Looks like it's a few tens and a bunch of eights. We'll pull this harness back some more now that there's less stuff in the way and we'll get to work with a wobbly eight first. pull those tens out but we'll come back and check on that in a minute let's get all the eights out of the way first and then we'll do the tens so let's close that four on that side i think looks like there's yeah there's another sneaky hidden one way back there you guys see that all the way in the back that'll be fun to get to Last one, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do that one by hand. Cause there's no way I'm getting a power tool back in there around that corner. So we'll just uh, unclick this one manually. It's gonna be fun to set the torque on as well. Ooh, I almost dropped my wrench. Hey, speaking of setting torque, you know, a lot of times I'll be in a, the reassembly phase 
tighten things down and then I move on to something else and I didn't bust out the torque wrench. And you guys really gotta know that I do torque these fasteners properly. Not everything gets recorded. For example, on this particular car, I disconnected the battery and did not record any of the battery disconnecting procedure. In fact, I used this very wrench that's in my hand right now in order to facilitate that battery disconnect. And look, I can prove it. There it is. There's a battery, disconnected. And people get mad at me because I'm not doing it properly and all that good stuff. But you gotta understand, this is a edited YouTube video and not everything is gonna make the cut. That's just how it is. And this bolt is in there pretty good. That's also how it is. There we go. Okay, the bolt is free. Coming out with just some flangey strength. This car is gonna wreck my back. Oh, yeah, because I'm bent over. Bent over far and then leaning way back in. I mean, I'm a tall guy and everything, but that's pretty far reach. Anyways, I do believe that this manifold should be coming free, unless I've got to take those tens off. I think, I think I do. I'm not sure why there's only, why there's two on this side, none on the other side. I'm pretty sure those are holding it down. Mm -hmm. Good. How about now? Aha! Loosey goosey, it's free. Let's pull this unit right on out of here. Here, let's give this a flip. Let's see what our bottom side is looking like. So we've got this uh, fairly large plenum gasket here. That's junk. Don't need you. Don't need you. And I need to scrape the rest of it off later and some debris fell in the hole. Okay, yeah, this thing needs a good deep cleaning and a degreasing and a decrustifying. We'll do that later. Over here back in the engine, there's more of that gasket business. And it looks like there's another flattened out O-ring right here. Okay, another O-ring right here. That one's leaking for sure, look at that. See that O-ring, how sideways it is? Oh yeah, that's a leaker. You see the coolant crust build up right there around that distorted side. Okay, that's junk. Look at that one. O-ring just broke in half pulling it out. That was gonna be a leaker, that's junk. Okay, well now we've got some space to work with in here. We've got a few more 10 mil bolts, uh, maybe a 13 or two for these brackets and we can get this lower manifold removed. So we have these series of uh, 10 mil bolts here, but like I mentioned, we've got these 13s for these brackets. Now, this one, that one brackets around on the back side of the cylinder head. So I'm gonna maybe try to not take that one off. So let's just pull the 13s off of this bracket on this side. These do not bolt down to the intake manifold, just drop that. These don't bolt down to the intake, but they do uh, bolt to the cylinder heads and they sort of straddle the intake. So if both of these are in place, it's kind of hard to get that manifold out. Now I can just kind of crack it up and pull it this way and just go around this bracket over here. Let me try to find that, uh, that bolt that I dropped down there. There she is, good. So now we're left with a bunch of little 10 mils all the way down each side and there might be a hidden one. Yeah, there is, look here, right there. There's a hidden one right here. And that means there's another hidden one right there.
Okay, I think that's all of them. Nope, I feel one more down there. There's another one hiding out in the back. she is it makes me wonder if there's another yep one right below us there we go i believe that's all of them got those two these two these two and those two that should be all the fasteners so let me get under here with a little pry tool there we go it's coming up Okay, I've piqued your anxiety enough with the leaves and the oil. I got you, no worries. I couldn't help it, guys, I couldn't help it. Look, as much as I get trolled because I expose myself to the interwebs, I, I think I get to take a jab back every now and then, right? Like, not all the time, but I think sometimes. It's fine. There we go, intake's free. Oh, it's nasty in here. That's super nasty. That's our lower manifold right here so here's one of the gaskets that's our failure prone leaker right there we can see this uh, gasket material is horrible that's the uh, actual sealing surface there it's embedded in this plastic uh, kind of casing this is junk another one right here on passenger side also junk that's a leaker spot right there. So right here, these sections, those are the intake manifold runners. And then that's coolant and coolant right here. So you've got coolant going through the manifold, through the cylinder heads and air going through. Okie dokes, we're not done yet though. I want to pull these valve covers as well because we're gonna reseal these at the same time. By the looks of it, they've never been uh, resealed before. Since the goal is to stop the leaks, then we're gonna stop everything that leaks. Uh, this might be fun to reach back there in the, in the back side. Yeah, we'll get the front ones first, I guess. One right here. And the rest. Well, they're, those are really far away. And there's a bracket back there. Didn't, didn't count on that. Okay, so I need to reach around this uh, cylinder head and disconnect this bracket right here. Because that's going to. That's gonna hold us up pretty bad. Flex head wrench. Just gonna give this the Erico style reach around treatment here. Oh, let's see if I can't get this to come loose. That's uh, things in there pretty tight. I got some pressure on it, but it did not budge. <sighs> Squeeze. Come on. Oh, no, not a chance. That bracket's not coming off. And there's a bolt right here behind that bracket for this valve cover. I need to get to that bolt. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try the other bolt on the, uh, on the other side here. There's two of them, I think. I'm laying on the uh, overhead creeper here, like hanging sideways off of it. It's a quite uncomfortable position. I must profess. 
So there's a harness, like a wiring harness in the way of that bolt that I'm trying to pull off of there. Can't see anything back here either. Whew. So this is just a nut. Ah, that's, I don't even know what it's doing there. I'm assuming it's holding on to this harness, maybe? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it wasn't doing anything. It's just, oh, that, wait, wait, wait. That's holding on to the dipstick tube. There we go. So now I gotta take the dipstick tube loose. That's fun. To take off the bracket, to take off the valve cover bolt. Jim, why are you mad at me on this car? What, what did I do to you? Is it because I, was talking about your treachery earlier on that Yukon video. Is this, is this my car karma? Hey, okay. ah, that's we're on a bracket bolt now. Oh, can't break free. Not turning. Oh, you guys fell too. Okay, that bracket bolt right there is not breaking loose not with this wrench anyway i'm gonna need more wrench and i can't even get mine back give it back to me uh-oh flashlight's dying that's how i know this is a hard job we lost a light man down man down you know what's fun is I'm gonna have to do the same thing on the bracket over here on the, on the other side as well. So if at first you don't succeed, come back with a longer stick. That's how we're gonna play this. Hmm. Can okay, you reach back there? Climbing on top of this engine. My overhead creeper is not giving me the reach I need, so I'm. I'm climbing in. New strategy. I need to move this stupid wiring harness out of my way, so. There we go. I'm not sure if that's gonna help. Probably not, no, it's not. Definitely having a like a self-deprecating kind of moment here. Not feeling too optimistic. Because this is gonna be fun to get out. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, what just happened here? Hang on. Did I just make a critical error of oh no. I thought this thing came off. I'm like, no way. That bolt's not even installed. But it, it appears it is. This thing's just flexing. So having said that, I'm gonna bolt it back down so I don't break it. Because now I pop the seal and any kind of pressure here, I could, I could break that other fastener off and that would not be okay. Micro clicks. Now I'm not going to break the valve cover. Okay. Let's try this again. Longer reach 13. Let's get it on that stud right there. This thing's killing me now. I'm not enjoying. I'm not enjoying the situation. Okay, so now I've got some leverage on the situation here. Put my hand up here and kind of give it a push. <sighs> Something happened. Was that the stud? Sure was.
<laughs> Get out of there. Okay. I'm gonna try the same thing with the next one back that I, there ain't no way I can reach that other one. I've gotta get it from the other side of the cover. Okay, here comes the solution. I've got a ratcheting crow's foot wrench. It's like half of a flex head wrench, or just the business end rather, on a swivel. There, right there, got a little wobbly bit. On a 3 8 male side extension, which is a half inch female side extension so I can put a big ratchet on it. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna feed this contraption all the way down into the hole back there. And again, we're gonna reach in there and find that nut, wherever it might be. Hopefully I can reach it with this setup because I can't reach it from the other side. And what it looks like, I can't get it from the bottom either. There we go. It's not gonna reach. Uh-oh, that's fine, I've got a solution. I'll add more extensions to the extensions. Fancy little, little goofy never use it tool, it's a snap-on. Uh, the part number is FZI. Yeah, that's it, part number FZI, this thing. So what I'll do is we'll put this thing onto the crow's foot and then onto the wobbly and we just extended this uh, about three quarters of an inch. So maybe, just maybe, I can get a hold of that nut. And, oh, oh, we're on it. There we go. So now what I need to do is get my ratchet onto the extension. Make sure it didn't come off of the nut because if it slips off, that's the end of the story here. And unpick. I think it turned. Or it slipped. One of the two. It, it either turned or it slipped. It better not have slipped. I think it slipped. Yeah, it did. It slipped off. That's that's just great. Fantastic. Well, let's see, it either slipped or it came loose, I guess, right? I'll go back in there with the business end. And, ooh, it's turning. Ha-ha! Look at that. You hear that? It's turning. Oh, beautiful. I thought I rounded the head off of it for a second there. Okay. That's great. One more reach in here and I can untwist that bolt. Now the real debate is, do I put this bracket back on the engine or do I not? That's the, that's the real question on this situation. Does it bolt back together or do we leave it alone? What do you guys think? What would you do? Would you put that bracket back on? Or would you... Uh, you just kind of forget about it and leave it alone. I mean, what does it really do? Is it really that important of a bracket? Maybe. Depends if you're pulling the engine out or not, I suppose. Here, get that thing up and out of the way, I believe. I can get a, uh, I can get a bolt. Or a socket on that bolt right there. Mm-hmm. Careful use of the wobbly bits. And I got her. Kind of. Not really. Yeah, you lose. Or did it really lose? Because I feel like I lost this one. Feel like a loser. 
Should have been an astronaut. I'll tell you what. Seriously? That bracket's gonna be the death of me. What is this? Dipstick tube. There. Dang. Okay. Well, there's one valve cover. And the other gasket. All right, y'all. Gross. I'm going with the exact same tactic on uh, the rear bolts for this gravity. Caught! Burp, take two. So I'm going with the exact same kind of tactic here. Snap this thing back together. Conglomeration of tooling that I came up with. It was turning. Seriously? This thing's killing me. Alright. Let's try that other bolt at the top here. Let's get that one. Came loose. That's enough. My fingers are also going numb. I'm sticking them back in there. Oh, tell me you're loose enough to turn. Oh, you. Wow. out of there get out look at that the bolt is running into the firewall yeah unbelievable look the bolt is hitting the firewall and it won't come out any further how am I supposed to how am I supposed to do this guys what is this okay hopefully it's out enough where it comes apart we're going to go with that. I'm going to take that bolt out. All I need is enough space to squeeze the valve cover past the bracket. That's all I'm looking for here. Pull the cylinder head off. I'll break the bracket off. How about that? I'll cut it off over there and bolt it on right here. Yeah. No, not really. So I think... I think I might have enough space here to squeeze this cover out with this thing disconnected and that thing loose. That's, that's probably fine. Woo! Okay, let's move the creeper out of here without gouging up the, the paint. I don't want to do that. Hmm. So I see another bracket here. This one and the EGR is in front of it. So we will continue disassembly. Take the EGR bracket off. Ding. EGR 
R2. Get out of there. Okay, EGR tube is out of the manifold. That's that piece there. So now, get that bracket out of the way. Yeah, now I get to the bolts for the valve cover. Bracket gravity. Rupture. Tis the gravitas of the bracketry. All righty, folks, I think we're coming up to a uh, pretty decent stopping point for this particular video at this time. I'm pretty sure we're well over like the uh, the one hour mark and we're definitely at the uh, the 50 percent mark uh, regarding the teardown segment uh, of this uh, particular project here. That being said, since disassembly is complete, what I have left to do now is clean up these gasket surfaces, spray out any debris that may have fallen uh, into the oil section of this engine, clean everything up, prep everything for reinstallation. Now, when I made the parts order for this vehicle, I didn't think I was gonna do the valve cover gaskets, but then when I got in here and realized uh, just how much of a pain in the butt it was gonna be to end up having to do that uh, potentially at a later date, I went ahead and ordered them and uh, we're just gonna do it all in one shebang. Um, that being said, I do not have the uh, the other gaskets yet, so uh, not only am I on a time crunch to close this video out in a timely manner, I also do not have any components for the reassembly portion uh, of this particular, pro particular project. So guys, having said all that, I have nothing more to offer you on this particular video other than a thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this engine and this uh, Ferrari bird in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there, and most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video in a Ferrari Bird 3.8 liter intake manifold teardown part one. In a day, in a video, in a transmission.